What's up YouTube? This is Mitch here with another tutorial. This tutorial is about general compression techniques slash how to add compression to a track. Fun stuff. You're going to want to know how to do these because uh, a compressor is going to be on almost every single one of your tracks. It really is. So let's get right into it. Let's talk about what a compressor does to a waveform. Okay. So this compressor is being fed a waveform. What we can do is set a certain threshold, um, and we can set a, th a certain threshold decibel rating, and any waveform that goes above that rating is going to be rounded off by the compressor. It's going to be compressed above that threshold. Okay. It's not going to be cut off. If it was going to be cut off, it would be a limiter, but we're talking about a compressor here. Okay, so as you can see, we can set that threshold inside a Logix compressor right here, and fun stuff. So let's talk about attack. Once that audio waveform gets above that threshold, attack time is the amount of time until that compressor kicks in. Release time is the amount of time it takes for that compressor to come down off of its compression it's like almost coming down off a of depression. <laughs> I kill myself sometimes. But seriously, um, ratio is going to be um, the amount of rounding off or compressing that the compressor is going to do to the waveform once it is over this threshold. So a high ratio is going to be a high compression. The knee is how if I set this ratio high, you'll be able to see this more. A low knee is a very harsh, um, little, it's not rounded off very nicely. So high knee is being rounded off nicely at that threshold rating. So I like a mid knee. And when we're talking about release and attack, I like to do it around 15 and 30, mid 30s. Um, that's about generally what I like to do. If I'm doing uh, vocals, I want to have literally no attack and somewhere under 10 milliseconds of release time. I don't like to have that. Um, vocals are very dynamic and attack and release kind of kills that. So let me kick that back up because I'm going to be putting this compression on a guitar track. Alright, so um, I have a banjo track here that is amazing. Best banjo track I've heard in a while let me tell you so uh, let's give this a shot what I'm going to be shooting for is a gain reduction of about four something around four um, it's not unheard of to s try to get up to around ten um, decibels of gain reduction but anything over that is a lot is a lot so be careful with the amount of compression you do to a track because you could kill it you could kill the track so be careful so I shoot for around four four or five something about that so let's do this alright see told ya incredible banjo track right killing it alright so as you can see our gain reduction was around four or the average was around four and the gain uh, makeup is around four which is great if it was averaging somewhere else say around six you'd want to kick this up to six decibels of gain uh... so just gain makeup fun stuff so um... there you are that's how you add a compressor to a track be very careful about using presets. I would suggest never using presets because that preset doesn't listen to the actual waveform, the actual audio that you are sending it. It's just fitting it into a mold and that mold is not always true. It's actually not true most of the time. So do it yourself just like I taught you and you will have a great sounding track. Yep. Alright, please comment, rate, subscribe like usual. Hopefully, I will see you very soon. Peace out.